Welcome back to a happy change. The lockdown edition. Clearly we're in times of anxiety at the moment. The coronavirus is difficult to kind of comprehend. It's not something that many of us would have faced before where there's a global panic. Now, if you already struggle with anxiety, low mood, um, or any other mental illness, actually it's times like this that can be quite difficult even if you don't contract the disease. So in this video, I just wanted to reassure and perhaps share some tips about how to cope with the panic and any potential lockdown, shutdown situation that you find yourself in, whether or not you actually catch the virus. So firstly, just to say, obviously it's okay to be worried. And actually one of the things that happens a lot with people with anxiety is you start to worry about being worried. Everyone is worried about this and I think it's just important to stop and recognise that this is a thing that lots of people are concerned over. So your panic, your concern isn't anything that's unusual, it isn't anything that's making you stand out or seem immature, unprepared, unprofessional, any of these things that might race through our mind. So just bear that in mind, okay? Many, many of us are concerned about what's gonna happen in the coming weeks and months and how that's gonna impact our livelihoods, our families, ourselves, our own health. When I was in a group therapy session about 10 years ago, possibly more, I remember sitting in this room full of people that had some sort of mental health issue. So whether I was there for an anxiety challenge, there were people there with OCD, people with PTSD. And during the kind of sharing of how these things manifested, one of the common issues was like a heightened anxiety around health issues. So it's really, really common that if you are struggling with a mental illness, you see everything as a catastrophe. That's why people who might suffer from OCD or anxiety tend to heighten what's happening. They might get a headache and worry, oh my gosh, it's brain cancer. Why is it not gone yet? This paracetamol hasn't shifted it. Maybe that cough that's been around for a bit longer is suddenly um, lung cancer or you know, the fact that they feel a bit dizzy is diabetes and all of these things are not normal, but normal within the relative space that we exist as people that struggle with mental health. So just to kind of label that as well, just to reassure that this is something that we want to challenge, it's something that we want to change. But there's so many people like you who are worrying right now, and not just worrying about the virus, worrying about death, or worrying about the death of loved ones, because our brains, as mental illness sufferers, tend to think what is the worst case scenario and focus on that rather than thinking what is the realistic scenario and recognising that. So the first thing that I want you to think about is around this negative thought and it's a way of countering the negative anxiety, I suppose, that we'll associate with coronavirus, that is I'm going to die of this, my loved ones are going to die of this, um, I'm going to lose my job. And I think when you come to that kind of catastrophe statement in your head, what you need to start reprogramming yourself to do now is add a statement beyond that. So the counter statement essentially is a CBT process. What it means is you have a rational thought, which many of us do, I'm going to die of this. Everyone I know is going to die of this and then you anchor the rational argument to the end of that statement so that in your brain it doesn't stop with the irrational thought, it continues and allows the rational argument to occur. So when you have a thought like, everybody that I know is going to die of the coronavirus, anchor your rational argument onto the end of that statement. Actually, most people who contract it make a full recovery and that's assuming they contract it in the first place at all. What we'll do is if we do that consistently is reprogram our brain to move past that catastrophe event and allow ourselves to recognize the rational. We all know the rational thought exists but we don't allow our brain to move into that space. So when you catch yourself stopping at the catastrophe, rationalize it. 
And a good way to do that now is just to come up with your stock phrase. So I want you just to kind of practice in your head saying, well, actually, most people who contract coronavirus make a full recovery. And that's your stock phrase. So the second thing I want you to think about is being connected. If you're worried about isolation, there's loads of things that you can do right now to connect. So take the time to reach out to a couple of your friends and say, you know, let's start a WhatsApp group where we can kind of just share what's happening in a positive way, maybe like a Corona free WhatsApp group where it's just about positive experiences, maybe make a kind of joke over the lockdown. So maybe it's a lockdown themed WhatsApp group where perhaps you're just going to share memes related to the fact that you can't leave your bedroom or your, your, your house or your landing or whatever it might be. Um, and, and try and make light of that, but look for those opportunities. The other thing that I'm going to plug is that I've recently created a Facebook group. Okay, I did make a page originally and someone advised that a group would be better for interactions. So I'll put a link in the description. It's a private group, so it means that you can have the conversations that you feel comfortable having in that space, um, that anyone can start a conversation. So once there's a few more kind of requests coming through, I'll start posting some information on there and sharing some ideas of, of to, to encourage you to feel connected. But it should be a space similar to the, the way the comments have worked on this channel to allow you to interact with people. So at the very least, you know you've got that community to come to. So please, please, please take the time to join up. But I would say look for those opportunities to connect with your kind of real life friends. Although I am your friend, don't worry about that but your real life friends who live down the street as well. The third thing I'm gonna encourage during this time is to exercise. And that might just be doing 20 star jumps when you get up in the morning. It might be to do some burpees. It might be to do some stretches, but just find a way to get the blood pumping a little bit, even if it's for 10 minutes, five minutes even. You don't have to do a full kind of Joe Wicks hit routine, but look for an opportunity to do some exercise. We know from the scientific proof that exercise works wonders for mental health. The next few weeks and possibly months are gonna be particularly testing. So I want you to try and incorporate some exercise into your daily routine. I've started, so I've started cycling more, if it looks like we're gonna get locked down, I'm doing some stretches as well. And I'll put some links to some YouTube channels in the comments, okay? So these are channels where it's free, there's routines from beginners to more experienced people. And I'll choose channels where you're not reliant on having any equipment. So it should really be just stuff you can do in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever it might be. Look for the opportunity to exercise and find yourself a five minute minimum every single day to do some. The fourth thing I want you to think about is breathing. Even just a breath like that, I immediately feel much calmer. So we're gonna find five minutes for our exercise, but I want us to find five minutes as well, just to work on our peace, okay? And we can do that through just some deep breaths. We don't have to be in a particularly calm environment, but it helps just some deep breaths or perhaps some mindfulness routines. So again, I'll put some links to some videos or some apps that might help you with that. I will put some YouTube videos as well that I use and, and ones that I use with my um, daughter as well when she's feeling a little anxious or can't sleep. And hopefully you'll find that just giving yourself five minutes to kind of ground yourself again will allow you to feel more positive about the outcome here. Remember, this is about regaining some calm in a time when actually we can control very little. The fifth and the final thing I want you to think about right now is programming in some treats. Okay, so allow yourself that bath. Make sure that you've got like a good film on rental, on Prime Now, whatever it might be. But give yourself the opportunity to have a treat. Bear in mind, you might not be leaving the house if you're ill um, and you might not feel up to much. So take the time today or the next couple of days for yourself or someone else to go stock up on your favorite bubble bath, your favorite candles. I know we've got a few candle fans on here. Um, your favorite, I don't know, Marvel film, 
big bags of Haribo, whatever it is that is your treat, I want you to allow yourself a budget right now to feel that you've got that treat in store for the next few weeks. Even if that means having like free cartons of Ben and Jerry's that stand by in the freezer, I want you to feel equipped to when you're having a low moment to look forward to a treat at the end of the day. That might be reading a Kindle book, that might be um, watching your favourite YouTuber. If anxiety consumes us, we tend to forget about doing these things. So think about them now when you're going to allow yourself that treat. And a good thing might be like, what am I going to do once a week? What am I going to allow myself to do every day? So maybe every day you're going to allow yourself to have a little bag of sweets or something like that. And then on a Friday, you're going to have a takeaway or you're going to have a nice bath, a bubble bath with... I don't know, scented oils and a nice candle burning in the dark or with your book out or anything like that, but plan for that now. So the main thing I want you to take from this is you're not going through this alone. It's very normal to feel worried. There's lots of people out there who you can connect with, myself included. Link for the Facebook group will be down below. The Instagram account is open as always if you need to DM. Um, comments always to engage with onto the videos there's a community out there of support and this isn't something that you are um, irrational about this is a normal fear but it's something that we can control the concern over even if we can't control all of these other factors that are leading to this anxiety and i'm really looking forward to hearing your ideas about making this lockdown a little bit more fun.